policy is often about trying to encourage growth, economic growth, with acceptable levels of inflation and unemployment. And the question naturally arises, the growth of what? <laughs> you know, what is it you're trying to grow? The, the most typical uh, measure of economic growth that economists will use are either gross domestic product or gross national product. And we're going to use this video to describe uh, what those terms mean and how one might measure changes in those variables. And along the way, we're going to be used a couple of different math concepts. One is percentage change and also thinking about levels versus uh, uh, change. And also, I should add uh, in here a related idea of stocks versus flows. Okay, so we've got videos about each of those concepts, so if you need a refresher about those, take, take a look at those if, if you get confused along the way. Okay, so what do these terms mean? Um, as is typical, economists use confusing language. You know, gross domestic product. I mean, who likes things that are gross? You know, gross means, you know, nasty. No, what all gross means? Everything. So when we talk about gross national product or gross domestic product, you're looking at all of the economic activity and the economy defined in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> so gross domestic product, which is often uh, maybe even generally abbreviated as GDP is the value of all goods and services produced within a country's borders. It's within the country. It's the domestic part. It's what happens within the geographical confines of that, uh, of that country. It's the value of all the goods and services produced. So you take how much is produced of every good in, in principle. You take the, the, uh, the, the quantity of goods and services produced in the economy and you then multiply that by the price to get the, the total revenue associated with the production of those goods and services. So this is really a broad measure of what happens within the country. Now, I will say that there is an alternative way of defining GDP, which instead of looking at the value of all goods and services produced within the country, it's the value of all labor and capital income that is created within the country. So if you took the, the incomes of all the workers and all the people that owned uh, financial assets, factories, everything, all of the different uh, payments to goods and services and, and profits uh, uh, finally, you would come up with the same number in principle as you would if you calculated the value of goods and services. So the most important thing about G this definition of GDP is that it's broad and it's what happens within the country. Now in contrast, there is an idea of gross national product. And that is a related but not identical idea. Gross national product 
is the value of all labor and capital income for national citizens. Okay, so why, why the, uh, so this is basically looking at the a different measure of the income of everybody, not what happens inside the economy, the domestic, you know, the geographical confines, but also takes into account that there's foreign investment. So we, U.S. multinational corporations have investments abroad. They get, they get income from that. And some of the activities that happens within our borders is related to foreign companies' ownership of factories here. And so we want to adjust for that. We want to take into account that there's you know, some capital in the, in the U.S. that is earning money abroad and foreign capital, machinery, plants, real estate, whatever, that is owned by foreigners. And we want to take that into account. And also, the labor income of people working abroad and foreigners working here. So GNP and GDP are closely related, but not the same thing. And there has been an increasing divergence between these two in a world of globalization. So for example, there's more and more foreign direct investment. There's more and more foreign um, multinationals operating inside the United States and U.S. multinationals operating abroad. So, you know, what the income of um, capital owners can vary quite starkly. And for many developing countries, they may have a significant number of citizens who work abroad and earn income. GNP would want to account for that. For example, there are many Filipinos who work in the, uh, in the Persian Gulf region, really all over the world, earning income. And we want to take that into account by in, in, uh, in some instances, and that's why we might use GNP. So, you know, it depends on what you're trying to measure. You're trying to take a look at what happens just within our country, or do we want to take a look at how much our citizens are earning? So you would either use GDP or GNP. Okay, now sometimes, oftentimes, we want to look at changes in GNP. Or GDP, and that is where you get into this concept of economic growth. Now, there are various ways to measure that, but the, I think the most common one that you'll run across is that you might look at the percentage change. Okay, and again, you want to go back and look at the video about uh, terminology and symbols. So this, in an earlier video, this is percentage change in GDP, okay, from say 2017 to 2018 is going to be the economic growth rate. It's the change in GDP from one year to another. Now, I should have mentioned earlier that GDP is <clears throat> typically measured for a particular time frame. It's how much income there is for a year, for a quarter, you know, uh, three months. GDP and GNP are measures of change. They are flows of income over time. It's about the change, it's not the level. Now, why is that important? So, one confusing thing for people sometimes is that, let's say there's a hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, and it has 
wreaks terrible destruction inside uh, a U.S. state. Now, it's clearly a disaster. There's clearly, you know, their homes destroyed, their businesses destroyed. What an economist would say is that the, that the level of wealth, the value of the things that people have, has fallen. That's clearly bad. But in a recovery, after you've dropped to a, this lower level of, you know, broad measure of economic um, uh, wealth, that starts to change. Okay, you have a, a downturn, and then you have a change in GDP as recovery takes place. Well, that can sometimes seem, seem strange because you'll get these data that, GDP growth has increased after a natural disaster. So, well, it doesn't mean that you're better off with the disaster. It means that you were growing from the base after the disaster. So you may have a percentage change in the GDP from you know, when the disaster occurs to when things start to get better. That doesn't mean you're better. It just means that there's economic growth. So. GDP, <clears throat> a percentage change in GDP, or GNP, is a measure of economic growth. Well, so let's, let's take a look at a particular uh, example. So let's say in the U.S., the GDP, in the U.S. in 2017 was 14 trillion dollars. What, again, what that means is that there's 14 trillion dollars of economic activity in the United States, okay, within the geographical confines, because it's GDP, in a particular year. So that's, that's not the wealth of the United States, that's the, that's the income. Okay, it's, it's what's being generated this year. And let's say this GDP in the U.S. in 2000 18 rose to 14.2 trillion. The GDP growth rate would be the percentage change from this to the new level, new income. So, how do we? <coughs> Measure that, okay, it's a percentage change. It's going to be 100 multiplied times 14.2, that's the new value, minus 14, and again, this is in, um, in, in trillions, over the base, 14, and that would be 100 times 0 0.2 over 14. I'm not going to do the math, but you put, uh, take out your cal calculator, and what you would see is that translates into a 1.4 percentage increase in GDP. So if you had a report on the news that you saw that said economic growth in the United States was 1.4%. This is what they would be looking at. So they would be looking at the percentage change from some, some year to the next. And this is typically uh, from you know, the first quarter of this year compared to the first quarter of last year. You have some, some basis. It's usually on an annual basis from one year to the other but for a particular quarter. But this is how we measure economic growth typically. Now there are plenty of problems with this as a, of this economic growth and the percentage change in GDP as a measure of economic or, or, or social welfare. Absolutely. You could have, you know, strong economic growth, as I mentioned, after, a, after a, a, an economic catastrophe. 
That's you know that's not a, that's not a good measure, or it doesn't tell you whether individual human beings are happy. It is used by economists in in part because it's traditional, but I think more importantly, it is something that is relatively easy to measure. You might want to take into account other things, income inequality, for example, or uh, political stability or whatever, but it's, this is an important core concept that economists use to try and measure the economic conditions in a country. Again, we've, so we've talked about unemployment rates, the measure of how many people are unemployed, inflation rates of how prices are changing, and this is telling you what's happening to the level of economic activity. You know, the combination of those things and other measures give you a broader sense of the, the vitality, the stability, the well-being of a country. Not one, none of these by themselves is enough, but this is an important part of the story and certainly one that economists use.